My name is Carl Otto. I'm with SAMHSA at the Center for Sea Watch and Response. And one of the mandates for us is to provide maritime rescue coordination services on behalf of the Department of Transport. Now, this device you see here, allow me to give you some short history. A few years ago, SAMHSA was program leader for a project sponsored by the Global Environment Facility through the World Bank. And that was primarily for safety of navigation and marine environment pollution. And the countries involved were Mozambique, Kenya, Tanzania, the islands of Seychelles, Mauritius, Comores, and Madagascar, uh, with La Réunion France Island as a partner. One of the outcomes from all the countries that attended was isn't there a small device that the small fishermen that each country has when they get lost to be able to find them? And so my undertaking as chair of the project was to see what we could do and come up with, with an answer. A couple of years later, an answer came up and it was this device. Um, and how it came about was uh, SAMHSA does satellite AIS tracking of ships and our satellite tracking provider indicated that there was a program hosted by the UK Space Agency that would provide some support to um, requests where there, are satellite where there is satellite involvement. And they indicated that they had this device which is meant for small vessels um, to be able to detect them should they have a problem. So we submitted our request jointly as SAMHSA and Exact Earth to the UK Space Agency. And they agreed that the outcome of what we were looking for uh, fitted within their definition of uh, being able to support. So the UK Space Agency then sponsored um, 1,500 of these units, bought them with it, all the allied equipment and wires and connections and so on, and paid for the costs delivered to Cape Town. So that was estimate of about 10 million rands worth of donation. With the proviso that these devices must be provided free of charge to the poorest of the poor, the subsistence fishers, etc., on our South African coastline. Okay, so the Identifier project then started in South Africa as a trial in 2015, where we were given about 100 units to test, and we sent some to Namibia for them to test as well. And the project ran well in terms of this device being able to transmit a signal, the satellites were able to receive it, and the MRCC was able to see it on the screen. So from that point of view, we were happy with the device itself, that it worked, it was small enough and easy enough to operate. So then we decided to go further with um, requesting more support, that we're quite happy with the, the, the initial phase. So that took a bit of time and eventually the, the 1,500 units landed in Cape Town. And then at SAMHSA, we decided to work with um, our boating and fishing people within SAMHSA structures to say who are the, the fishers that need this the most. Um, SAMHSA also issues marine notice every year indicating the number of deaths in the fishing industry and sometimes it's even marked as two four vessels under 15 meters in length. <clears throat> so we know each year we are losing fishers which affects families and so on. So we said, but what can we do to help them? So when this device came up, we said, but here's an answer. It's a fairly simple device. There's no codes, there's nothing. Um, just switch it on. And if you're in trouble, press the red button. It'll flash red. And this will send a signal to a satellite. The satellite will pick it up. It gets detected in Canada, our, the base. And they send us an email message to the MRCC to indicate this particular identifier with its code number, is in trouble. The guys in MRCC, they, when we issue these devices, they would record the name of the boat, the code, 
their phone numbers, their home address, everything like that. So should there be a problem, it pops up on their screen, they have a look, they check the database and make a few calls to make sure that the person is indeed in trouble. And as was said in the presentation as well to the UK Space Agency, if nobody answers their phones, then we assume that there is a problem and we will then coordinate the rescue, with whether calling out the NSRI or a helicopter or other vessels in the area. So this was done for a number of the fishing communities on the west coast and south coast. So we have delivered about 90% of the identifiers that we received for South Africa to fishing communities from Port Elizabeth all the way around to Port Nolith. Um, and the, so the SAMHSA surveyors and the boating people and the fishing people all work together to coordinate the meetings, explain to the fishers how to use it, what it's for, the purpose, etc. Um, quite a number of the fishing community were very hap happy that SAMHSA was helping. And the upside for them was that they're getting this device free of charge as per the requirement from the UK Space Agency and also the rescues are free of charge. So we said there's no downside for the fishermen is when you're in trouble, press the button, we get the message, we'll come look for you. Uh, so this has been done and so with the meeting when the UK Space Agency visited us at the end of July, the idea was for them is to ensure that the funds and the equipment that was provided to SAMHSA has been used or is being used for the, for the purpose in which it was given, that it was given free of charge and that we are starting to get feedback from the fishers about the use of it and being detected. We have had a number of incidences where the fishermen have said no, they were quite surprised that they got a phone call almost like within two or three minutes of pressing the button to say, is it an emergency? One or two of them said, no, this was accidentally switched on by mistake. Others were sort of surprised, said, yeah, yeah, no, we have got a problem. Um, so we said, right, we'll coordinate. And in a number of instances, there's normally a few other vessels in that area. So the MRCC would basically look for this particular device on the electronic map and then zoom in and then find out if there are any other vessels. And with the same database that this one is on, they'll see what there's three or four other boats in the area and we contact them to say if they can go and help. And that's often how some of the rescues happen before we even need to call the NSRI. If there is no other option nearby, then the NSRI or a helicopter through the Air Force gets called in to assist for the search. And the whole idea of this device is to cut out the search part, which can be quite extensive at times. A recent incident we had taken three days using helicopters, three NSRI boats, two naval boats, other fishing vessels, uh, police, NSRI patrols on the coastline, and we couldn't find these people. There was three people in, in, a, in a small boat that went out, they didn't have a device, and we couldn't find them. And they eventually died. Had they had this device, within two or three hours, we would have rescued them. And that's kind of the message that we're trying to bring across to the fishers. It's got nothing to do with where you're fishing. As if you are in trouble, press the button and we'll come and rescue you. And so coming back to the, the space agency, one of the, uh, the visitors as well is part of the monitoring and evaluation of the project. And again, like uh, with all organizations, they don't just want to dish out money and hope it gets used. So there was also to evaluate what we are in fact doing. And that led to the visit the next day after they visited Cape Town to go and visit the fishers in Lambert's Bay. All right, so the use of the identifier. And while South Africa has been using it for, for our fishers, we also realized with the outcome of a previous project that I mentioned earlier, that there were a number of other countries that have the same problem that we have. We're losing lots of fishers and we don't know how to resolve it. Till this issue came up and the identifier worked well. So what we did at SAMHSA, uh, and again, SAMHSA also thinks regionally and to a degree continentally, 
And they said there were other countries that were interested. So SAMHSA then, of the 1,500 units given to us, we decided to deploy just over 330 units. Some went to Namibia, some went to Mozambique, to Comoros, Madagascar, Mauritius, um, Senegal, and the Gambia. Now, Madagascar had a slightly different, they came online a little bit later, so they actually got the newer, the newer version, the South African version of those devices being tested as well. So part of the project was that the project leader and myself would go to these countries, explain how it works, show them how to use it, how to fit it, and quite a few of them uh, were given access to satellite tracking of the actual data so they could see it. So not only did they get to see these devices, but they also got to see ships in the EEZ. So each of the countries that we worked with, we gave them access to the, the display web chart so they could actually see their vessels. So from that point of view, it worked well. We did one or two follow-up meetings with a couple of the countries um, to ensure that they were using and if there were any problems, if there were any feedback from the devices and so on. And one of the, the feedbacks that they gave then was that some places do not have electricity. And so we said, oh, we have an answer. The South African version, which does the same job, except it works with solar this little built-in solar panel in the system. Unlike the identifier which you have to take home to put in an electrical socket and charge, this one will be charged by the sun. The batteries typically will last two to three years when they're charged, uh, two to three, sorry, two to three days when charged. And so that's the two devices currently that are being used and being tested and sponsored by the UK Space Agency and Exact Earth Europe. The understanding now in terms of the South African version is that the same company that made these solar panel, uh, solar devices um, for tracking, they also were approved for support to manufacture not just for South Africa but for those in Africa and beyond because it was quite a a clever device, clever idea and it could be adapted to different frequencies so depending on what each country and frequency they wanted to use, it could be adapted to that purpose. So that was part of the trial and that's working well. So this device, the identifier and the device that the South African made, they're calling it Angel Fish, um, both work well and are being used. And so going forward, uh, the next step would be if there's more devices required um, and from SAMHSA's point of view, we are proudly South African. So we will then purchase rather the South African built device which has the solar panel, which makes it much easier. You don't have to keep disconnecting and taking it home kind of thing. So you just leave it fitted and that will work. Um, so part of that project is from the UK Space Agency monitoring and evaluation to see but what are we doing going forward as SAMHSA ourselves. And again, the thing is to say we're not just giving money and when the money runs out, the project stops. So SAMHSA has been investing. All the trips that the SAMHSA surveyors and the boating and the fishing people have been doing have been at SAMHSA's cost. We hire halls, we buy coffees and donuts and things for the fishers that gather. And we try to get the communities involved as much as possible, so not just the fishers, so that the family and sometimes the children come along to actually hear what this device is about um, and they often ask but how, how much is it and so on. I said well we tell them it's about five to seven thousand rand depending what you buy or what you need um, but that will be provided free of charge from SAMHSA's side um, and we have uh, instrumentation that we can detect to make sure when you we can find you when you're in trouble. So that was our sort of local as well as regional and continental um, use of the device and explanation to others to say, well, there is an answer. Um, a number of the countries are quite happy with the use of their device and starting to say, but maybe we need more. And this is where the issue would come up of, let's use the South African uh, system 
uh, called angelfish uh, for that purpose because most of those communities they have problems with uh, charging and electricity issues um, so in the project technically from the UK Space Agency as close as that was their final their visit for the sort of closing of the project however from our point of view we will continue reporting through the project leader in the UK we will give feedback to the UK Space Agency to say we've this is our report um, these are the number of rescues this is where the identifier for now has proved uh, vital in finding the people alive because often we eventually find dead bodies which is also a requirement uh, especially given uh, insurance policy issues so we would prefer to bring home as we like to say warm bodies rather than cold bodies and so these projects uh, specifically on, on um, detecting of small fishing vessels is not just uh, useful for SAMHSA in South Africa but for lots of our neighboring countries as well that sit with these problems. Unlike the bigger ships, they have all the equipment so we don't need to help them. But it's small fishing, small boats uh, where lives are lost every year where this is sorely needed and we as SAMHSA are proud that we have something that we can use and we will be even prouder if we can use the South African version and export it elsewhere. Now, one final thing that I think is important to raise is the issue of the, these artisanal fishermen. We are looking at conditions pertaining to the sea and not inland waters. People don't get lost in inland waters. Okay, the question is, is it only used primarily offshore? And the answer is no. Um, there is a trial in Mozambique with the South African version because we detected and they were said the Mozambique and said to us on the Kabora Basa Dam, the people that they drift around and they stop in different villages, there's no power. So they were quite happy with the device, the solar panel device that the South Africans designed. Um, so it's used inland as well. Um, what is possible, and it might not be free of charge then, is for pleasure users um, that be able to purchase it, basically the price of a, a smartphone, that they can put on their boats uh, and use it. So with the big dams like Hartebius and so on and Val Dam, that's a huge area. The NSRI has a station, I think, on both of them, but to actually try and find the people is the problem. Um, and often what they say is there's so many entry points to these dams is that you might go in at the wrong end and the person in need is actually on the other end. And so if you, the same thing, to know exactly where the person is or the boat in trouble and then you can adapt your rescue accordingly. Because always, uh, the argument is always time is money. And especially if your life is hanging on time, uh, it's very important to know exactly where the, the problem is and then you send your resources there straight away.